What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, well, almost every episode, I am always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. But in this episode, to justify my clickbait title for this video, that uh, pro-choices are human garbage, I am going to argue the pro-life stance from an atheist perspective. That's right, I am taking my Christian hat off for a minute. There is no illumination of God's word in this video. I am not a Christian in this video. I am going to present the pro-life arguments from a standpoint that an atheist, uh, a, a rational-minded atheist, could get behind. And I'm going to do that by presenting back to myself some of the arguments that I hear on a regular basis from pro-choicers. And when I push them to the absolute limit and to the logical conclusion of the argument that they've presented me, well, then, of course, A, I need to shut up because I'm a man. Or B, I need to stop pushing my religion down their throat. The, the level of idiocy and lunacy and, and irrationalness that belongs to those who are leftists uh, is... is astronomical, uh, and let's put my Christian hat back on for a second, that they have been given over to a depraved mind. Uh, <laughs> if, if ever you want to know that the Bible is true, look at the references to people being delivered over to a depraved mind in the Bible, and then look at our culture and our society, and that's proof enough right there that the Bible is true outside of all the evidence of the resurrection. So, okay, Christian hat back off. Uh, I'm an atheist now. Hi, my name's Ryan, and I'm an atheist. <laughs> Um, so the biggest argument that I get from people, and I got it just today, is that the zygote cannot live by itself. It is completely and utterly, completely and utterly, if I were a Christian, that might have been tongues, uh, but I'm an atheist. So if, so the, the, the zygote can't live without being connected and sucking the life out of the mother, and how dare I, how dare I say that a woman has to support this life? So there's two sides to this that need to be addressed. First, uh, dependency on someone else uh, is not a reason to kill someone. And two, why is the zygote uh, dependent on the mother? Why is it attached to the mother? So part number one, I have children. I'm a father. And when my children were born, after being inside of my wife for nine months, guess what? <laughs> they were 100% dependent on my wife and myself. We did not set that baby down in a chair and go, you get a job. It can't. It can't feed itself. It can't even articulate what's wrong. It can only scream. Is it hungry? Is it tired? Is it poopy? Does it have a bellyache? Is it scared? Scared to death because for the first time it's not swaddled up uh, in a cramped space. And it's entirely dependent on the mother. So a zygote being dependent on the mother is no different than a fully formed human baby outside of the womb five minutes after it's born, ten minutes after it's born, a year after it's born, three years after it's born. It is still entirely dependent on its parents. I have a three-year-old. He cannot be left alone. He does not know how to feed himself. He's not even fully potty trained yet. Not fully. And I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, <laughs> he might lick an outlet if he's not <laughs> attended to. So, sorry, that argument doesn't work. Because children, after they are born, are dependent on their parents. That's why the legal age of adulthood is... 18. So, I mean, if if we're going to use that argument to justify abortion, then I get to kill my three-year-old. Uh, I get to kill my children up until they turn 18 because they're dependent upon me for life and for food and for shelter and for clothing and for an education uh, and for their general, genuine safety and well-being. And to the second point, that why is it dependent on the mother? Well... Odds are that mother made a decision with the father that they were going to have sexual intercourse because that it's not like babies just kind of 
it, the stork isn't real, liberals, okay? The stork isn't real. You have to have sexual intercourse between a biological man and a biological woman to conceive a child, and sex is fun. I mean, let's be honest about this. L let me even do it this way. Christian hat back on for a second. I'm a Christian again. Sex is awesome. Sex is fun. Orgasms are great. Giving an orgasm to someone else is great. And I can say that as a Christian. Okay, Christian hat back off. So, um, <laughs> just spent 30 seconds screaming at my camera that orgasms are awesome, but they are. And even if you don't believe in God, because I'm an atheist again, uh, an orgasm is nature's incentive to reproduce. The function, the purpose, the design of sex by nature is to reproduce, to create a child, and the orgasm is the incentive to do so. So the end game of sex is children, not orgasms. The, 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 the orgasms are a mean to the ultimate end game, which is children. So, uh, uh, what about rape and incest, Ryan? Well, let's just cut to another stupid argument made by the left. Rape and incest make up less than 1%, and I'm being fair, uh, uh, make up less than 1% of the motives behind an abortion in the United States of America. As a matter of fact, uh, on, typically, it is 0.5% of abortions performed uh, as, early, as, as recently as 2004, 0.5%, uh, and that's down from the 1% that it was previously the last time it was polled, uh, is for rape and incest. So th the exception doesn't redefine the norm. I'm sorry, that argument doesn't happen either. And while we're touching on this rape and incest issue, uh, rape uh, violates a person's right to their body. And, and we're don't, I'm not a hypocrite. We're going to talk about a person's right to their body. So we're going to get to that too. Uh, so rape violates a person's right to their body. And I have to agree with the man, the myth and the legend, Ben Shapiro, that rapists should either be castrated or killed. Fathers who have sex with their teenage daughters should either be castrated or killed. And yes, I'm pro-life, and yes, I advocate for capital punishment, because a baby is innocent and has not committed a single crime against humanity and deserves the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. A grown-ass man who has... Uh, I can say that because I'm an atheist now. Uh, a grown-ass man who has committed a crime, had been caught, been judged guilty beyond any reasonable doubt by a jury of his peers, I think, as far as capital punishment goes, being a financial suck on American society, that man should be brought out behind the courthouse and shot in the head on the spot because a bullet costs less than 20 years on death row. Tw a bullet to the head behind the back of the courthouse costs way less than 20 years of three hots and a cot. Okay, so uh, someone who's guilty of a crime is not under the same rules as someone who did not even ask to be conceived. Kill the rapist, not the child. The child is likewise a victim. The woman didn't ask to be raped. The child didn't ask to be conceived. <clears throat> Next argument. Uh, well, it's along the same lines as the, the zygote can't live on its own, and it's the um, life support argument. Uh, you know, that's part and parcel. How, what is it? It's, it's like a, a famous something or other person. You wake up and you find that person connected to you and they're a famous person and they've contributed greatly to society. Are you going to unplug that person from yourself? Well, that's a stupid argument, uh, but the left likes to make it. So first of all, uh, the person, the baby that is plugged into you is again, as previously mentioned, plugged into you by your hand well, your genitals, your need for sex, be you a man or a woman, uh, the, the, the blame for abortion does not fall singularly on women. Men, well, we play our part too, don't we? Um, the reason that famous person is attached to you is because you attached them. When you made the conscious decision to have sex, knowing that the biological result is the conception of a new life, uh, you connected that person to yourself. I'm sorry, that's just how it works. And even if you've used a condom, those are only like 98% effective at most. And so there's still a chance that you're knowingly taking that you could conceive a child. So no, this, is, this random stranger is not attached to you. And this random stranger that is 
attach you that, well, not even a random stranger, this human being that is your family, your literal family is attached to you. You do have a moral obligation. They're going to get better. They're going to be healed and recovered and viable on their own in nine months. So it's a matter of inconvenience of time, not a life of servitude because you made the decision to attach them to yourselves. So this is just a stupid argument. Now, uh, Christian Hat, <clears throat> have I made an argument from the Bible yet? No, but any one of these arguments that I have made thus far by itself will get me banned from the conversation because A, I'm a man, or B, I'm a Christian. Are you beginning to see how stupid it is? The, the Pro-choicers are human garbage because they don't want to debate the facts. They want to insult you because they're actually incapable, intellectually incapable of arguing the facts. Okay, Christian hat back off. Hi, my name's Ryan, and I'm an atheist, and I'm pro-life. <sighs> Need I go on? I, there's so many lies that the left tells about abortion, things like it should be safe, legal, and rare. Well, that's not true either, because now we're in a culture of shout your abortion. So that's not true um, <laughs> at all. Look, 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 we can talk, oh, oh yeah, we were going to talk about bodily autonomy, a, a woman's right to her own body. <clears throat> well, you can't dictate what a woman does with her body, nor would I ever want to. I'm not interested in her lungs. I'm not interested in her arteries. I'm not interested in her heartbeat. I'm not interested in the function of her kidneys or her liver or her spleen or her digestive tract. I am interested in the life of the distinct and separate human being that resides in her because of a decision she and some man had made together. That is the life that I am interested in. That is the body that I am advocating for. I, I don't care about the woman's body. Her body, her choice. But we're not talking about her body. We're talking about another heartbeat. Because if you're a human being and you have two heartbeats, you're a medical frickin' anomaly. Or a Time Lord. And I highly doubt anyone who's pro-choice is legitimately from Gallifrey. So I'm sorry, but only Time Lords have two hearts and you're not a Time Lord. I am not interested in your body, your heartbeat, your body, your heartbeat, your choice. I'm talking about the baby's body, the baby's heartbeat, and the baby's choice. And when the baby is left to its own devices from zygote to birth, it chooses life every single time. <clears throat> and... The last argument, and I'm going to close this out, the word abortion is a euphemism. It, it, it's a, Maybe that's not the right word, but the word abortion dim, diminishes what happens. So let's say, let's go back to that analogy where you have someone attached to you for nine months. Uh, it's not, abortion is not pulling the plug on that person and they go quietly into the night. Abortion is you don't want that person attached to you anymore, so you're going to pull them limb from limb while they're fully capable of feeling pain to get them off of you. Or you're going to inject chemicals into them that are going to burn them from the inside out until they die. And if they should somehow survive, well, fuck them. I can say that I'm an atheist. Fuck them. Because just leave them on the table. Let them die. Okay, abortion is an ugly thing. It is grueling. It is brutal. It is awful. And one more argument while I'm at it. Christians don't care. Yes, they do, damn it. And they care for the life of the child after it's born. Adoption agencies, uh, foster parents, uh, charities from that come from collection plates at churches that go around the community uh, to support women and children who have lived, women who have made the decision to have their child and to support the life of a child that has been born and, and put into the foster care system. We care greatly for children like this, and we would rather spend most of our time talking about how to make adoption easy, cheap, and the norm. We pro-lifers want to spend more time talking about making adoption the way to go, making an adoption easier than an abortion. So go ahead, 
Christian hat back on. Hi, my name's Ryan. I'm a conservative confessional Lutheran. And I'm pro-life. And I'm proud of it. And I don't need my faith to be pro-life because as I've already proven, I could be an atheist and be pro-choice or be pro-life. So I'm done. Pro-choice is a human garbage. Uh, that wasn't clickbait. I stand by that. If you're pro-choice, you're human garbage. You are. But as I always close out every episode by saying, until next time, may God richly bless you and the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. I mean that. And I mean that to the people that I've called human garbage, that Christ has died for your sins. He was condemned in your place and he gives to you as a free gift his perfection, his righteousness, his holiness, his merit, so that when God looks at you on judgment day, he sees the blood of his son and can say nothing else to you except for welcome home, good and faithful servant. There is forgiveness and pro-lifers, if we're not willing to look in the eyes of a woman who has had an abortion and smile at her and say, Jesus loves you, what the hell is wrong with us? <laughs> the hell is wrong with us? So, until next time, may God richly bless you and the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. And I mean it.